and welcome to another of my fishing how-to videos. My name's Brian Pollard aka F1 Pit Pass and I love carp fishing. The subject of today's how-to is how I approach a day carp fishing. So, how I approach a day's carp fishing. Here we go. Research the weather. My carp fishing is weather dependent. The one condition I do avoid is any medium or high wind. If it's raining, not too much of an issue. If it's snowing, no problem. If there's snow on the ground, not a problem. Ice on the lake, well it must be winter. All of these suitable conditions. Oh, and I should mention if it's baking hot and the water's flat calm, brilliant. That suits my style of fishing down to the ground. So, research the weather. Consider the moon phase. It is relevant to carp fishing, but if we're only considering dawn to dusk, it doesn't have a major effect on our type of fishing. So my day starts with an early rise, check the weather and screen grab the weather forecast for my diary for any video and for looking back at any memorable days arrive early at the lake and see who else is on where they are and where they might be casting fishing While you're walking around the lake, check out the wind for affected pegs. Sitting with the wind in your face all day can dehydrate you, tire you out, and you wonder why it's taken so much out of you at the end of the day. So. Be aware that any wind will affect fishing, it will limit your casting, it will affect the accuracy and overall affect the enjoyment. Some might say the carp follow the wind and the carp end up in the margins at the far end of the wind. Lakes that I visit, you'll see the wind changes throughout the day. And any scum or leaf litter on the water moves around the lake. So if the theory about camp following the wind has any relevance then you wouldn't know where to sit because the wind would take the camp around the lake throughout the day. If there's a general direction for the wind 
then maybe you could base your fishing on where the carp might be driven. I would just use this as another factor in watercraft and tracking where they might be throughout the day. I would take a lakeside photo for my blog and also it's a nice memory of the conditions on a particular day. I may well upload that photo just to show friends and fellow anglers on social media where I'm fishing that day. Setting up. I set up my unhooking cradle and landing nets, of which I use two, and place a waist sling over the cradle to assist in returning any cap to the lake. I unpack my rods, which, as I said earlier, I have simple bands around the top and butt of each rod so they can be set up in a matter of seconds and I bait them up with my chosen bait for the day. Majority of the time it's tiger bread so one rod may well be free line a one rod may be an adjustable zig. Both setups can be found in separate videos if you care to follow my other how to's. I would cast one bait out into mid lake and one if there's a decent margin in my chosen peg for the day. Further set up, well, I like to film most things throughout the day, so setting up my camera on a tripod with an overview of the peg and even me setting up, which can be useful for some new carp anglers I suppose and hopefully people get something out of it. So I set up the camera and start rolling for the vlog. Essential for my day is to set up my carp chair, a comfy chair with short armrests and attachments on the chair where I can further attach bite alarms. So this becomes the two rod rests for my twin 10 foot rods setup. As you may gather from previous videos I fish with the rod tips high So resting the rods against the bite alarms which are attached to the adapter on the chair means I'm ready to go in a very short while. Further set up, I set up a side table and my odds and sods bag just under the rods. I place my bag 
the beard, that's tiger bread, within reach of the chair. And they set up my iPhone in the Iographer um, casing holder, you might describe it, with a two times zoom lens on, all mounted on a tripod, close by my rods, for any close up work during the battle, the casting or the landing of any carp. This means my phone is close by, handy for use, handy for checking on social media, including uploading any photos, checking on posts, And as I say, taking that useful short video that I can splice into the full day's video to produce more varied action for the viewer. Setting up my car boot. I have a small car with a hatchback, fold down back seats. I have a, a fishing box in the boot well. And on top of this fishing box I place my stove and my kettle and my bag of tea making equipment and food for the day. Essential for me is to have a cuppa as you might gather throughout the day and after any landing of decent sized carp. If you're excited by a large high double cap and you need to just take it all in, savour the moment, then as soon as the cap's returned it's kettle on and enjoy the moment. Getting back to my setup at the water's edge, I have a spare unhooking mat at my feet and this is handy for dealing with sub 10 pound carp or any other fish be it silvers or small carp so I can unhook them safely and return them all from the comfort of my chair. It's a small cost and it's a spare mat. Ever since I started using the cradle I wouldn't be without it, especially for grass carp that like to, uh, well, thrash about. So if you've got a a nice new unhooking mat or cradle and you still have your previous unhooking mat maybe consider having it at the water's edge should you fish from a chair as I do and then it's handy to protect the fish help with unhooking and the safe return, safe quick return of sub 10 pound carp. Essentials 
glasses, hook length box with any spare hooks, rigs, ready tied, a few loom bands. Further essentials, sunglasses, all dependent on the weather. Order of the day. Boil a kettle, make a cuppa. Sit in my chair. Decide on rebaiting the mid lake rod. As I said previously, I would set up and cast one rod mid lake and one rod in the margin. If there's any surface drift or wind or silver's activity, or bird life activity, the mid lake rod or the margin rod may well need rebaiting. So, initially, sitting in the chair, I decide on rebaiting the rods. I occasionally reposition the camera for different shots. I'm always looking to get the take and the battle from different perspectives. If I catch a decent carp, I decide during the final stages of the battle which net to use. I have a large net and a medium net. I would land the fish, rest it still in the net at the lake edge. The lake eye fish has very handy wooden posts low at the front of the peg that's very suitable for draping your net frame over when resting the carp. It's a very rare carp that decides to jump out of the net. The majority will just sit quietly in the margin wondering what on earth has just happened. Getting back to, I've just landed the fish, I've rested it in the net. If the hook hasn't come out in the net, then it's still attached and the rod's still attached. So I put the rod down in the rod rest. I would stand up, reposition the cameras, that's my video camera, I would reposition that to point at the unhooking cradle, taking great care to make sure that I don't chop my head off when I take the shot. And I would reposition my iographer and phone camera for the self-timer selfie shot for close-ups. These are the ones I would upload to social media during the day. I would move the net and the carp and the rod to the unhooking mat. 
you hook in cradle, sorry. I would unhook the cap. Place the rod to one side. Set the cameras going and lift the cap for the quick photos. A bare tub of water to keep the cap hydrated is a good idea if they look like they need it add water to them especially around the gills if it's a memorable cap i.e. a largish longish cap then i may well set up the camera for the shot of returning the cap Return the cab and reposition all the gear and myself back in the chair. Hopefully with a cuppa and a nice set of photos for memories. Well I hope that's been of interest to how I approach a day's carp fishing. Join me again soon. If you like the video, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.